Hello, you're watching the International Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch, where we bring you some of the major stories from around the world. Let's take a look at the headlines. Textile workers protest poverty wages in Haiti. Wet sweat and activists approach United Nations over rights abuses. Puerto Rican teachers protest wage and pension cuts, and one soldier killed in Israeli airstrikes on Syria. In our first story, we go to Haiti, where hundreds of workers staged a protest in the capital of Port-au-Prince on February 9th. The action was organized by several textile unions outside the Sonapi Industrial Park. Workers are currently being paid only $4.80 in wages per day. Wednesday's protest was heavily repressed by police, which deployed tear gas to disperse the crowds. In response, the protesters set up barricades and burnt tires on the road. The SOTA BO union said that at least nine people were injured due to the police action. Workers are demanding labor benefits and a hike in daily minimum wage to 1,500 goods or 14.5 US dollars. In January, a coalition of nine trade unions had submitted a letter to Prime Minister Oriol Henry. The union said that three years had passed since the last adjustment to the minimum wage. Meanwhile, prices of necessities like food, transportation and healthcare have continued to rise. A Solidarity Centre report found that the garment workers were making four times less than the living costs in Haiti. Workers held a spontaneous demonstration outside the Sonapi Park on January 18th to raise their demands. The area is among the several free trade zones housing foreign multinational corporations. Conditions in Haiti's garment sector and textile export sector have been widely described as sweatshops. Workers face abusive and exploitative conditions and restrictions on freedom of association. Reports including diplomatic cables obtained by WikiLeaks have also shown systematic efforts by the US to keep minimum wages low in the sector. Our next story is from Canada where indigenous Wet'suwet'en activists have approached the UN citing rights violations. They have highlighted issues of forced industrialization and police militarization. Hereditary Chief Woos and leaders from the Gidimton Checkpoint have submitted a report to the Human Rights Council. It argues that Canada's actions contradict its obligations to reconciliation and the UN Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous People. The report points to criminalization and forcible removal of peaceful land defenders. It also cites irreparable harm caused to wet sweat and lands and cultural sites due to industrial destruction. The report forces on the ongoing resistance efforts against the coastal gas link project. The 670-kilometer pipeline will carve 22,000 square kilometers of unceded indigenous lands in British Columbia. A drill site for the project is also located near the headwaters of the Sacred River. Since 2019, the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, or the RCMP, has carried out three invasions into the territory. A major crackdown took place in November when 30 people were arrested in a militarized raid. After successfully reoccupying the protest sites, Wetsuwet'en activists were forced to enact a strategic retreat in January. They have demanded that Canada withdraw the RCMP and associated policing services from the territory. They have also demanded that all permits for the pipeline be suspended and construction be halted. We now go to Puerto Rico, where thousands of public sector employees took to the streets on February 9th. Teachers have been mobilizing against cuts to wages and pensions imposed by the Fiscal Control Board. On February 4th, the FCB announced a plan which included only a $470 raise for public school teachers. This amount itself would be divided into two stages. Protests were witnessed across Puerto Rico last week as almost 75% of public school teachers staged a walkout. After the strike, Governor Pedro Pierre Luisi announced a pay hike of $1,000 per month. Housing costs and prices of basic goods like food and petroleum have soared on the island. Meanwhile, according to the Claridad Puerto Rico, the wages of public employees have not been increased in over a decade. In 2016, the Fiscal Control Board was imposed on the island by the US federal government. The board has proposed a series of austerity measures, including cuts to social spending, to address a major debt crisis. The FCB also took over the finances of public corporations, which negotiated via collective bargaining agreements. Labor reforms have also limited overtime pay and made work more precarious. Teachers were joined by other workers, including firefighters in Wednesday's demonstration. Protests are expected to continue ahead of major changes to the teachers' retirement system starting in March. And for our final story, a Syrian soldier was killed during twin attacks by Israel on February 9th. Missiles were launched from across the Lebanese border and the occupied Jolan Heights. Five people were also wounded in the attacks which targeted civilian areas near Damascus. The Syrian Arab News Agency reported that some of the missiles fired from Lebanon had been intercepted. The attacks caused substantial damage to civilian infrastructure in the city of Qutsaya. Israel later acknowledged that it had used aircraft for attacks across the Jolan Heights. It added that the operation was in response to a missile attack from the Syrian territory. The missile in question had exploded in the air without causing any material or human damage. The Syrian Foreign Ministry condemned Thursday's attacks as a double violation of international law. It also highlighted UN Security Council Resolution No. 350 on the Disengagement Treaty. 
The ministry accused the U.S. of enabling and providing protection for repeated Israeli attacks on Syria. It warned that Syria had the right to use all legitimate means to respond to such aggression. Israel has escalated its attacks in recent years, which have killed a large number of Syrian civilians. Most of the airstrikes are conducted in violation of Lebanon's airspace. Israel rarely acknowledges these attacks and claims that they are defensive against Iranian and Hezbollah installations in Syria. That's all we have time for today. We'll be back tomorrow with more news from around the world. Until then, keep watching People's Dispatch.